Okay, well, thank you everybody for uh, for uh, joining us today. We're very excited about our next trip with our Clovis Chamber, Chamber Travels program. And we're excited to have another trip with Indus Travel. We had a fabulous time this last uh, uh, fall um, in Portugal with Indus and uh, we decided to to use them again. It was such a, a great experience. So Sahid is gonna take the microphone and, and, uh, and talk about Prague, Vienna and Budapest our next travel destination, um, October 14th. So take it away. Thank you. Thank you again, Greg, and thank you, um, the community um, and the members of the Clovis Chamber of Commerce. On behalf of the Chamber and on behalf of Indus, I'd like to, uh, to welcome you to this webinar. And let me begin start sharing my screen. So thank you again. All right, so we are doing a webinar presentation on the uh, tour, the next tour of the Clovis Chamber of Commerce, which is titled The Glimpses of Prague, Vienna and Budapest. It's gonna go on October the 14th of 2024. And again, we are gonna depart from the beautiful airport of Fresno. The objective is to present the glimpses of Prague, Vienna and Budapest so that you, the listeners, learn the features know some facts and book this this beautiful trip uh, which is being offered to you at a really very very good price i'm sure you all know that the way the prices are going up in uh, in europe and if you compare what i have to present to you today to these beautiful destinations where we are going uh, you will really appreciate that our pricing is very very good so what i'm going to present today is some quick facts and knowledge about prague vienna and budapest I usually cover countries, but this time I'm not able to because we're going to three different countries. So I'm just going to concentrate on the cities. I'm going to concentrate on the city of Prague, the city of Vienna, and the Budapest, city of Budapest. Then there will be um, a brief, um, you know, in, uh, just a couple of slides on tour highlights. What does the tour include? What does it not include? Then a brief narration of day one to nine, because this is a nine day tour. Uh, of the entire tour, but I will not emphasize a lot because this information is available in the brochure and it's also available on the online link, which has been, uh, you know, is, which is available on the website of the Clovis Chamber. Uh, then there will be just one uh, slide on who we are in Dust Travel, how to book and general information. Then we will have some information on passport, visa, health, currency, weather, country information, and then at the end, we will take your questions. So again, some of you might have joined us for the webinar that we did the last time for Portugal. We cannot open everybody's microphone because it makes a lot of you know um, noise in the system. So if you look on your screen on the top left corner, there is an area which says Q&A, question and answer. As I go through this presentation, you can ask any questions that you have by typing a question over there. If this is something that Greg or needs to answer, then he will answer. And if this is something that pertains to me, then at the end, after I've done with my presentation, we will answer your questions accordingly. So Czech Republic is right here because right in the central, which is Czechia now, Austria and Hungary. So you can see this is Central Europe. So we're going here on the map. We are in Prague here. So we're gonna land in Prague. We are going to do an overland and come to Vienna. And then from Vienna, we're going to do an overland and come to the capital of Hungary, which is Budapest, as you can see. That is your map. Okay. Three beautiful countries, three very fascinating cities of Central Europe. Some interesting facts about, like I said from the beginning, that I'm not going to concentrate on the country because then the presentation will become too long. And plus, we are not going to the entire country. We're just going to the Capital. So some interesting fact, beginning with Prague, which is the first city. So Prague is a historical junction. It's a city that's, that's steeped in history, uh, serving as a cultural and political crossroads of Europe, not today, but for centuries because of its strategic location. Now, on the uh, Latawa River, uh, that is what made it, it the hub of trade and culture. And it in, it's also influence, influenced with diverse architecture and wide, vibrant atmosphere. So that is, um, you know, very interesting fact about Prague. The next one is that 
it is an architectural spectacle. Uh, spectacle. Um, it is, as a matter of fact, known as a city of uh, 100 uh, sparse, uh, and Prague is stunning uh, array of architectural styles, include the Gothic and Renaissance to the Baroque and Art Nouveau, which is our new art. All sorts of you know, architecture is something that will be very visible in, in uh, Prague, a beautiful city. Um, the iconic Prague Castle, the Charles Bridge, Old Town Square are some of the few highlights. There are many, many other things, you know, but I'm just highlighting a few. Also, this capital of Czechia is a cultural highlight. It's a center of cultural innovation and creativity, nurturing the talents of renowned figures such as Franz Kafka, uh, Antonin Dvorka, and Alphonse Mucha. Also, its theaters, concerts, hall, galleria host world cross performances and exhibition. This is common between, as a matter of fact, in all the three capitals, you know, so the Prague also. Uh, of course, Vienna is top, number one. And then uh, even Budapest has got, you know, a lot of theaters and concerts and, and symphonies and things of the sort. A very interesting factor for those of you who are beer lovers, uh, this is the beer capital, deep rooted beer culture. Prague stands as its, its, its ep epicenter. Um, it has, you know, traditional pubs, beer halls, and the microbreweries offering diverse selection of beers. And some famous names are the Pilsner Urkul, the Budweiser Budawar, and it is really a paradise for the beer uh, enthusiasts. So if you are something, and you're gonna have some, you know, some free time in the city, so you can definitely go around and, and you know, have some, uh, go around and look, check them out, you know, some of the, uh, the, the pubs or the beer halls as they call them. Also, a very interesting fact about it is that it's got some sort of haunted history. So long and turbulent history, you know, brings a legacy of myths, legends, and ghost stories. For example, there is, you know, very famous mysterious Prague Golem and the infamous alchemist Edward Kelly. These are some of the names which are known. So it is shrouded in tales of supernatural, which adds really an extra layer of intrigue to its very enchanting atmosphere. Already it's an enchanting atmosphere. So this is, these are some interesting facts about Prague. The next city is obviously Vienna, which is the capital of Austria, the neighboring country. So first of all, it is a city of music. Everybody knows rich musical heritage, home to legendary cost composers, Selfridge the Wolfgang, the Amadeus Mozart, and the Ludwig von Beethoven. Um, also Johann uh, Strauss, uh, then the second, and it continues until this day to be a hub for classical music with renowned institutions like the Vienna uh, Philharmonic Orchestra, the Vienna State Opera, and many more. I can could not cover, but it is really a capital, and there are many, many shows of operas and musicals and orchestras and symphonies that take place until today in Vienna, a real culture city. Also is the cultural capital, the next one. Uh, it's a cultural powerhouse, impressive array of museums, art galleries, and theaters. Uh, the museum quarter, quartier is one of the largest cultural complexes in the world. The museum quartier is the largest uh, cultural complex in the world, and it houses the Leopold Museum and the Museum of Modern Art, MOOC, as it is called. And also the Vienna State Opera, and the Burg Theater are the iconic venues for the opera and theater in the capital, Vienna. Also, it has got an imperial majesty because it has got magnificent architecture that reflects, you know, from the former seats of the Habsburg Empire. So there was, it was empire, it was really very luxurious, um, you know, and magnificent, you know, culture and palaces they have. So. It's a grandeur landmark like, you know, you have the Chandran Palace, which is, by the way, you know, is, is, we are going there as a special trip. Then you have the Hofburg Palace, and then we have the Belvedere Palace uh, that showcases city's imperial legacy. And also it offers glimpses into the lavish lifestyle of the past rulers on the empire. A very important factor, now this is for the coffee lovers. So we, we had a uh, Prague, for the beer lovers, but here is the coffee culture. It's synonymous, the city of Vienna is synonymous 
with coffee culture. Traditional coffee houses serving uh, beloved as beloved institutions where people gather to enjoy coffee and pastries like, I cannot pronounce this properly, so excuse me if any Germans around, and if you feel that my, my pronunciation is not correct, then please pardon me, but it's something like Sakuro Torte, and then we also have something called Apfas Trudel. Uh, these are some of the pastries that go along with the coffee in the traditional coffee houses. And also, uh, it all these you know, coffee houses are the rich, rich literally and intellectual tradition. That means a lot of people sit in the coffee houses and they have discussions and long sessions and, you know, it's, it's kind of tradition. And they have been frequented by luminaries such as Sigmund Freud and Leo Torsky as well. Um, you know, some of the famous names. And finally, it's a cosmopolitan appeal. The city has got a lot of cosmopolitan appeal because of the atmosphere, which is evident in its diverse cul culinary scene, uh, where vibrant markets and lively neighborhoods. For example, there are trendy districts of Naboo. Then there is Leopoldrastad. Then there are historic streets of Innerstad. And there's something for everyone, blending old world charm with modern sophistication so you know it's all Vienna one of the one of the you know real beautiful cities of Europe and one of my most favorite as well by the way Salzburg in Austria is the most favorite of mine by the way by the way uh, even more than uh, Vienna okay talking about Budapest which is the capital of Hungary some interesting fact again facts again number one that this is a city of spas so it's popular for its thermal baths with abundance of natural hot springs and home to numbers of historic baths, like the, like the iconic Zekini thermal bath, the Gellert thermal bath, and it attracts hundreds of thousands of you know uh, tourists for relaxation as well as for therapeutic uh, you know uh, purposes. Not today, but since centuries. By the way, Czechia or Czech Republic is also a destination for these spas and for the therapeutic, you know, for detoxification and things like that. But that is not so much into the capital of Prague. There is a separate area, separate, you know, you can, as a matter of fact, go to Czechia only for the purpose of these spas and for curate, uh, curative waters and therapy, therapeutic purposes and things like that. Uh, but that's not in Prague. But here in Budapest, it's right in the center. And I have included one of the picture of, you know, one of the typical spas that you have over there. Also, so bridging culture, you will be, um, you know, the name Budapest actually is very interesting. The city is divided by Danube River. So Danube goes through the city and one part is called Buddha and the other part is called. So Buddha is situated on the West Bank and it is portrayed by its historic castle district and hilly terrain. Pest, which is part of Budapest, is on the East Bank and it is the vibrant, vibrant commercial and cultural heart of the city. And the iconic chain bridge, this bridge over here, we can see uh, the picture over here. The chain bridge um, yeah, is actually connects these two sides, symbolizing the unity of the city. Very interesting, Budapest. Nobody, a lot of people do not know what, what the, the name of the Budapest. Uh, architectural marvel again, and this is common, you know, culinary, Architecture marvels is common between all the three countries. So again, this is a stunning architectural landscape featuring a blend of styles ranging from uh, Romanesque to Gothic, Art Nouveau to Neo-Baroque. For example, the Hungarian Parliament building, the St. Stephen's Basilica, the Fisherman's Bastion, and these are some of the city's architectural treasures uh, which captivate uh, the, the visitors you know, from around the globe. Again, it's a, it's a culinary, it's culinary charm. So Hungarian cuisine uh, is known for its hearty and flavorful dishes, influenced by a mix of Central European and Balkan culinary traditions. Goulash, paprikash, uh, langos are most, are some among the iconic dishes. And I have got a slide on each of these dishes because if you are going to these cities and you're gonna eat, then you know, you might as well know, I have included five, seven, dishes you know which are the top dishes into each city and i'm going to show you the slides uh you know after this one so it offers an array of traditional eateries trendy bistros and bustling markets and finally again this one again is a cultural hub with a wealth of museums galleries theaters music venues 
Nash Hungarian National Museum, Museum of Fine Arts, Hungarian State Opera House are worth mentioning places. Also, it hosts numerous festivals and events throughout the year, celebrating everything from music and film to food and wine. So very, very cultural city, the beautiful city on the uh, Danube River. Some must try food in Prague. So uh, let me begin. Where is it? OK, the first one is the dumplings over here. So it's the port dumplings. Uh, which is called Wetro Nedlo Zello. So it's uh, pork dumplings right over here in the middle. The number two one is beef tender, uh, beef uh, tenderloin. Uh, where is beef tenderloin? This one here on the right, top right. And then we have number three uh, is goulash, which is uh, right here. This is goulash over here. Then you have something which is called the roast duck with cabbage and dumplings which is up here on the top left corner. And then you have their local names, which are very difficult for me to pronounce. So I'm just translating them for you. And finally, we have something which is called the pork knee. Uh, no, there's one more. So pork knee is right here. This is the dish. And they have something also, which is called a smazek in the local language, which is not nothing but fried cheese, which is, this is the picture where my cursor is moving. It's a very delicious uh, way of, you know, so in Middle East area, you get something which is called halloumi. Halloumi is also fried, but they do not, um, you know, cover it with anything. But this thing is covered with some sort of, you know, a dove, and then they fry it, and it's very, very delicious. It's a must, must try. You must try the, uh, you know, the fried cheese, which is called the smazer. In um, uh, Vienna, again, some must try food is uh, Viennese coffee, of course, which I spoke to you about. So you're going to do that. Then there is some schnitzel which is right here, this picture over here. So schnitzel originates from uh, Austria. It's it's a German thing, but they say that it originates from Austria and from Vienna. And also there's something which is called the sakero trait, which is this one here, it's a sweet dish. It's a beautiful cake over here. Then you have the, uh, the goulash version of Austria, which is the Austrian goulash, which is right here. And then you also have apple strudel, which is right over here. So these are some of the uh, you know dishes that you need to try. In um, Budapest, um, I spoke about the langos. So langos is deep fried, duffy flatbread that's e that's eaten uh, with you know warm, and it is slathered with sour cream, grated cheese, or and or garlicky butter. And sometimes you can put all three together. Uh, you know, so you can either put one, two, three, or you can put all three. It's very beautiful. And this is right here, the picture up here, you can see. So this is the uh, deep fried Duffy flatbread. And it is, you know, put with all the sour cream and the and the garlic butter and all that. Then we have something called chimney cake right over here. Interesting again, because uh, it's the, its original name is something like Kurtos Kalax. Uh, and what does it mean is because it's, you know, it's actually dove, which is coated with, sh with sugar. So when they put on top of the coal, uh, it crystallizes and it becomes beautiful. And when they remove the, um, you know, the, uh, the middle um, stick on, in which it is being roasted, then the smoke comes on and that's why it is, it has got the name chimney cake. So very interesting and something you must try. Then the next one is the stuffed cabbage which is pretty simple right here. This is the same tradition, you know, which goes on in a lot of Middle Eastern countries and around the Balkan and around the Mediterranean. So you, you know, you, you get this in the Lebanese tradition, you get this with Turkish, you get this with Malta, you get this with Italian, and you also get this into Hungary. Uh, the next one is again, uh, goulash, which is the Hungarian style. Now, this is interesting that it's, this is Hungarian national dish. And it turns to be served as a stew in most part of the world. But the authentic goulash is actually a thin broth made from chunks of beef cooked with onions, paprika, tomatoes, and pepper. And it's usually served with fresh white bread and chopped hot paprika on the side. So, you know, what they claim that our goulash is the original goulash because it's a thin uh, broth, you know. So you again need to try this. Then we have something which is called the drummer cake, which is right here. Uh, obviously, the name comes because the way 
it looks is called the drummer cake and then you also have their sausages which are very popular um, the hungarian sausages uh, we get them in the united states as well and they make something which is called the cold fruit soup which is this picture it's very very delicious something that you need to try so much about food let's talk about um, our uh, featured product which is the glimpses of Prague, Vienna, and Budapest. Um, and it is going to go uh, from Fresno to Prague, Prague to Vienna, Vienna to Budapest. And we're going to fly out of Budapest back to Fresno. Um, so the price for this beautiful trip is $3,649 round trip from Fresno. And also, if you do not have a partner or you'd like to stay single occupancy basis in your room uh, for the seven nights accommodation, then you need to pay 699 supplement, which is the single person supplement on top of 3649. So this is the price of this beautiful trip. Absolutely worth the pro, you know, the value for money. Uh, some of the highlights of this trip, you're gonna explore the picturesque and historical city of Prague uh, with an expert local guide. You're gonna stroll along Prague's magnificent Charles Bridge, this one here, on the right uh, on the right top corner. Uh, also, you're gonna discover the musical city of Vienna, home to many famous composers, like I explained to you. One of the picture of the the magnificent, you know, uh, music concert hall over here. This picture is also one of the major building of the music center. I'm forgetting what this is the National um, uh, Orchestra Center, most probably, but I may be making a mistake. And finally, also going to admire the incredible architecture and experience. Warm welcome in the city of Budapest, of which this picture right in the middle, a night shot, is of Budapest. Uh, what does it include? It's round trip, international round trip uh, flights from Fresno, seven nights accommodation at the listed or similar hotels, uh, daily breakfast, arrival and departure transfers on a group basis, services of local English speaking guides. Uh, that means every time that you're going to take a tour, half day city tour, or uh, one of the other you know tours that appear on your screen in blue, uh, there is going to be a local English guide. But you will also have an English speaking driver escort who's going to take you right from um, the, um, you know Prague into um, into Vienna and Vienna to uh, Budapest, who will be speaking English, but he's not your guide. Of course, he's got a lot of no local knowledge. But with our trips, what we do is when we are giving you a tour we bring a specialist guide who's english speaking guide and he will talk to you if you are doing the city tour of prague then prague vienna budapest and the other three tours that we're going to do i'm going to speak about them as the turn will come so that is going to be included private transportation by deluxe air conditioned vehicles sightseeing tour as per the itinerary and we are going to do the following three in prague we're going to do prague folklore party dinner and entertainment on the same day that we arrive in the evening Vienna historical city tour with that with that palace that I spoke to you about the Schönbrunn Palace. So we're going to visit that, and in uh, Budapest we are going to do the Godolo ca Castle half day trip again from Budapest. And in addition to that, we're going to do half day city tours of each of the city, which is Prague, Vienna, and Budapest. So very very interesting uh, tour. What does it not include is items of personal nature, tips, graduates. What is personal nature? If you happen to use laundry services or in your room, if you happen to use any minibar, nobody uses the phone. But if you happen to use the phones, you know, and make an international call, then these are all your personal expenses, which are not uh, covered. Uh, if there are any meals offered, then the beverages with the meal. I mean, tea, coffee, of course, is all, all and water is always offered with your breakfast. But any beverage, I mean, soft drinks, any liquors are not included. Uh, luggage fee may apply and vary by the carrier. I'm again being careful. Uh, we are, you know, going to use 95% of the chances that we're going to use some airline that I'm going to show in my next slide, and those will include one check-in, one carry-on, and one personal item. But the airlines are changing rules. We are still far away, about six months away from October. Um, you know. The airlines are changing rule in the you know post-COVID era when there is unprecedented demand uh, for the airline, and you never know that by the time you know we issue your tickets, they may bring you some baggage fee. So I'm just being careful over here. Travel insurance not included. 
Uh, there is no visas required for all the three countries for U.S. passport holders. But if there is a green card holder with a different passport, then there, there may be a visa required. And that visa fee is not applicable. And any other item which is not under um, you know, the inclusions is not included. If there was a direct flight, if there was a direct flight from Fresno to Prague, it would have taken 16 hours of nonstop flight. So it's kind of far uh, because you're going from the West Coast United States to Central Europe. So you're not even going this time to, you know, Portugal, which was the first country, uh, as you can see on the screen over here. So Portugal was a bit shorter because it was closer. But here you're going up, you know, about a couple of hours more going towards the Central Europe. Flights are usually fixed 90 days before departure, 120 days before departure, or when few bookings will come through. We already have got six passengers booked on this trip uh, so far, but this is the first promotion that the Clovis Chamber and Greg is doing. So I'm sure that from today's presentation onwards, that people are start going to, um, you know, people are going to begin making their booking. Tentatively, 95% of the of chances are that we are looking the following flights. Remember, you're going from a smaller airport, and you're going not to a major hub of the Europe, Europe, neither Prague nor Budapest. It's not like London or Paris or Amsterdam. So you will be taking a United flight, which leaves Fresno at 10.50 a.m. on October the 14th, arrives 12.05 in Los Angeles. And then you have a connection at 2.55 p.m. from Los Angeles on a Lufthansa flight, which takes you next day morning, 10.45 into Frankfurt. And then you take a connection, which is a beautiful connection from 10.45 to 12.20. So you're looking about two hours and five minutes connection, which will take you from Frankfurt to Prague. We'll bring you in Prague at a comfortable time at 1.20 um, uh, p.m. in the afternoon. Return flight, like we are, like I told you, we are going to, because we're going to go overland to Budapest, well, Vienna. So return flight is going to come from Budapest. Again, a Lufthansa flight on October 22nd, 9.40 a.m. So very comfortable departure. You are not being asked to, you know, get up early in the morning. So you can have your breakfast by 6.30ish, 7ish, depending on, you know, the traffic, which your local guide will tell you. You should arrive about two and a half hours before departure to the airport. Arrive 11.25 in Frankfurt. From Frankfurt, you go to Denver at 1.30 uh, p.m. Arrive local Denver time at 3.40 p.m. And then you have a connecting flight from Denver at 6.50 p.m., which will bring you back into uh, Fresno on the same day, October 22nd, at 8.19 p.m. 95%, these are the flights, but we have the right to change them until the bookings will come through. So please don't come and kill me tomorrow, you know, if we have to change the flights. But what we promise you that we will give you standard full-service airlines. Day two, you'll arrive in Prague, you'll be received with a ply card, which will say Clovis Chamber uh, Group. Uh, by our representative, you will be transferred and you will check in into your hotel. Uh, these are the pictures of Prague, and this is your airport in Fresno. On day two, we are um, going to stay for two nights, which is day two and three, in a beautiful hotel, which is called the Mama Shelter Hotel. Uh, the external picture of the hotel, as you can see, is a classic hotel, beautiful, uh, you know, breakfast area that you can see over here. One of the bedroom, which is the one one of the bedrooms, so it's a four star beautiful hotel um, and it's home for two nights and you know usually if you look at the google map every european city has got a gray line going around like this can you see where my cursor is moving and that usually is the city center your hotel this is danube river by the way your hotel very really close that means a centrally located beautiful hotel after some time at leisure which your your driver and your guide will tell you you will be given a time to once again meet on the uh into lobby and you'll be taken for the prague folklore party dinner and entertainment which i'm going to present to you in my next slide so as you can see it's um you know the the, uh, the czech style dances music drinks and all that so you're going to celebrate an evening in, in prague in traditional czech style with three hour dinner with entertainment uh, that will include unlimited wine, beer, and sodas. Also, you will travel by coach to the typical Czech restaurant, take a seat for the evening color for Czech folklore and feasting. 
sip on complimentary glass of champagnes, savor three course dinner, and uh, some of them will be the, you know, these are going to be the check dishes. And then you can also clap along the cheerful tunes. And if you want to go ahead and join them on the floor towards the end on the dance floor, then you're welcome to do that. So that is about your uh, Prague uh, folklore party dinner entertainment evening on the day that you arrive into Prague. The next day we are going to do after the breakfast, of course, we're going to do the half sea, half day um, guided city tour of Prague. And you will begin in the Wenkesles Esquire. Uh, square uh, founded as a horse, horse market in the 14th century. Then you will pass through the Piazza della Repubblica. Uh, then you will walk the Royal Route uh, and pass the theater uh, district, Charles University, Old Town, and all that. So you can read the, the all the information there uh, in the on our brochure or on the web on the online link that Clovis displays. Uh, you are also going to go on to the uh, the historic famous bridge that crosses the uh, Latawa River. And once you are done with the half day trip, you will have the rest of the half day. So you should be back right around lunchtime. Remember that this is your private tour, private guide, private coach. So if you decide, or if Greg decides that, okay, let's you know ask the guide and we all wanna go and lunch somewhere typical, before the coach brings you back, you can ask them to drop you to that restaurant and then you can have your lunch together, or if you want to do on your own, or if you want to be dropped into the shopping area or the entertainment area, and you want to take a room Uber back, then you know all that is doable. So this is our day three, uh, and we are done with Prague. On day four, we will, uh, after the breakfast, we'll depart from Prague and we will travel overland to Austria's capital, which is Vienna, and we are leaving the day the afternoon for you to do things on your own. Uh, so, you know, we do not want to burden you on every single day. And you are again going to be in the center of Vienna. Um, and the hotel that you're going to stay in Vienna is called the Mercure Hotel. Again, a beautiful three and a half, four star hotel, as a matter of fact, the external picture, one of the bedroom, and again, the breakfast area. This is going to be a home for two nights, day four and do day five. Um, on day five, uh, we are going to do half day panoramic sightseeing tour of Vienna. So we'll begin again at the uh, the Ringstrasse, uh, the road that follows the perimeter of the ancient walls of the city. And uh, it separates it from the rest of the historic center of Vienna. Um, and then from here, you will be um, able to see, you know, uh, see the Museum of Applied Arts, the Opera House, the Museum of Fine Arts, Museum of Natural Sciences, the court, the theater, the university, and all that, you know, so you can read again. And also remember uh, that there are some imperial palaces that was the former winter residence of the Habsburgs. Um, the palaces, uh, uh, you know, that they have, they, they actually boast imperial treasury, um, Spanish writing schools and all that. Later in the day, you will be taken on a specific tour, which is called the Vienna Historical City Tour with one of the palaces. Because remember, your panoramic tour doesn't stop. You don't enter into the palaces. But then we are going to go. So after this trip, I do not know whether there will be a time between your half day city tour, whether they will bring you back into the hotel and he will give you a break and say, OK, I'll pick you up. But in my, my guess is that no. You will go in the morning and you'll continue with the trip in the afternoon and he will give you an hour lunch break. Again, remember your guide is your friend. So, he, you know, he stays with you and he will explain you what is to be done and things like that. Let's talk about the historical city tour and the Schönbrunn uh, Palace. So this is uh, some of the pictures of this beautiful palace, as you can see over here. Um, you're going to explore the magnificent city of Vienna. Uh, if this tour is going to be about three and a half to four hours. Uh, you're going to go by coach. It includes your admission to the Schönbrunn Palace. Um, you will pass major attractions like the Hofburg Palaces, City Hall, Vienna State Opera, uh, as you don't, you know, drive along the famed Ringstrasse and, um, uh, you know, the lavish summer home of the Habsburgs Monarchs. And then, of course, you will enter into the palace. Um, and about three and a half to four hours, you'll be brought back. 
and you will be sleeping in your hotel and visit until the next day morning when you will. Uh, we will again check out from the hotel. We have stayed two nights in Vienna and now we're going to go to Budapest. So again, um, you know, you are, uh, you know, be, you will be taken from Vienna Hotel and you'll be brought into Budapest. And on this is the only day that you can either spend the rest of the day at leisure or you can do an optional tour. But before I talk to you about optional tour, the hotel, which is going to be a home for three nights because Budapest is place, we are going to stay three nights. So the day six, day seven and day eight, it's called the NH Hotel, a beautiful four-star hotel of which the pictures are appearing over here. Uh, you have one of the bedroom, the reception area, the bathroom, the entrance area, the dining area for the breakfast and things like that. So again, beautiful one. Um, I forget to put the slide of the, um, the optional tour that is available over here. My apologies. Uh, but when I will send the presentation as the uh, on a deck, I will include it. But mind you that this particular tour is you can see it on the online link, which you can do on day one upon arrival in Budapest. So again, I'm repeating, you have the choice of being at leisure and do things on your own, or you can take that optional tour. And that's the only optional tour we have. Everything else we have included on day seven. Uh, which is after you've slept the first night in Budapest. After breakfast, again, you'll proceed on a half-day guided city tour of Budapest. You will begin the tour with a visit to Pest area of the city, where you can see the exterior of the Palace of the Parliament, uh, the Stephens Basilica, which is the largest church in Budapest, um, and the uh, Heroes Square, Millennium Mon Monument, and all those. And also, you will be, you know, will see the Shenyi Baths, the exhibition center, and you will be transferred back to your hotel after you're done um, with this half day city tour. So again, your, your afternoon is at leisure. Mind you that Budapest is the, is the fun capital of Europe. A lot of Europeans from Western Europe travel to Budapest for the nightlife. So we are deliberately leaving you that afternoon free. You can leave the first afternoon free, have a lot of fun because this is the, you know, the, the, entertainment capital of Europe, like I'm telling you, uh, and the nightlife capital of Europe also. So again, on day, day seven, you do the tour in the morning and we'll leave you in the afternoon for whatever you want to do. Uh, on day eight, after breakfast, you will proceed on uh, the tour, which, which is called the uh, Godolo Castle tour. And um, after you're done with this tour, you are, uh, you know, you're, you're at leisure. To do shopping, enjoy with the best famous night nightlife. Like I told you, what are we going to do on the Godolo Castle half day trip from Budapest? We are going to visit the second largest Baroque style castle in Europe on this four hour tour. So this is the second largest Baroque style castle in Europe, Godolo Palace in Hungary, and this castle was the former summer residence of the beloved Hungarian Hungarian Queen. Her name was Elizabeth. Um, uh, and, and you will depart from Budapest. You'll be driven to the castle to enjoy a guided tour. And then you will have chance to explore the royal stables, um, stroll through the gardens, enjoy some Hungarian pastries in the palace cafe. And your tour will conclude with a drop off back to your hotel. Your afternoon again is free for your last night in Budapest. So we are giving you the first afternoon, the second afternoon, and the third afternoon to have as much fun as you want. or Budapest is also very famous for shopping. So you can start doing, if you are you know, somebody who likes to do a lot of shopping, then you can go. Uh, there are some very famous streets called, uh, uh, I'm forgetting the name. Uh, I think it's called, uh, my apologies, but I have included the picture over here, but I forgot the name. Uh, so my apologies over here. And I do not want to give you a name and then um, you know, um, uh, it happens to be wrong. So nonetheless, so this is your trip. Um, you have ended your day eight and day nine. We are going to take our flight from Budapest airport and we're going to fly back home uh, with the flights, which I told you in the beginning, 95% of the chances are that you will depart at 940 in the morning and with a connection via Frankfurt and Denver 
uh, you will arrive back into Fresno at 8, 19 p.m. at Fresno local time. So that is about your trip one to nine, from day one to nine. Uh, what did we cover in this trip? So, you know, if we did this trip from Prague to Budapest via Vienna, um, it's only 360 miles. So, you know, all European countries, you know, are close to each other. And if you did this nonstop without traffic, it'll just take about six hours and 15 minutes. What I'm trying to emphasize over here that, you know, you, at no time and point in time, you're sitting in the coach. The longest is from Prague to Vienna, which takes you about three hours and 15 minutes. And then from Vienna to Budapest, just about two and a half hours. That is the only time you're going to spend in the coach when you're traveling. So very comfortable, uh, you know, air conditioned vehicle that you're going to travel. You're going to spend two nights in Prague, two nights in uh, Vienna, and three nights in Budapest. We are in this travel. We are a, a tour group company or group tour company. We do various types of groups, but more close to thirty percent of business comes from chamber travel. Um, and uh, in twenty twenty three, we we did uh, some close to two hundred and fifty chamber trips alone from various chamber from coast to coast. It's a privately owned independent business, and uh, some of the decisions, for example, one of you wants to be upgraded to business class or you want to have an exit row seat, you know, which which requires, um, you know, extra payment for that kind of seat, or if there is a premium economy available and you want to do that, or any other thing that you want to do, you want to extend and stay behind in Europe, you know, after that, all these decisions will be done very, very quickly. I'm going to speak to you who's going to be your uh, dedicated tour coordinator in my next slide, and she is going to be doing all that for you. A very knowledgeable team, so right from our product to operations to air and us in the sales in the group sales department, we come with a lot of you know uh, experience and background. Um, I personally uh, in the industry, I'm in the industry for close to 30 years. Um, I recently uh, went to three new countries. So my number of countries that I've been to now comes to 76, 76 countries. Uh, we are 22 years, 23 years in business now, established back in 2001. Uh, we have some genuine industry recognized consumer protections. Our rating on Triple B is A. And also, our rating and ranking is maintained by a Google partner independent review company, which is called reviews.io. And we are holding on to a 4.75 to 4.8 out of five star. Remember that this is a dynamic. Um, you know, review site. So if we get good feedbacks, then it remains high. By the same token, if, you know, we get something bad, then it can go down. But for last two and a half years that we are partnered with this company, we are holding on to 4.73, 4.75, 4.8, and so on and so forth, uh, which speaks for the quality of services that we offer. How do you book? You book online. So if you see this link where my cursor has moved just now, it's a live link. If I click over here, it'll take you to the live link um, so you can hold uh, your booking today uh, with a deposit of five hundred dollars and you will need to pay the balance by june the 15th which is 120 days before departure last year when you went that was 90 days but like i said uh, in, during my airlines you know uh thing unfortunately the airlines have got so much of business that they don't care they've got a lot of attitude in spite of we give them hundreds of groups per year and they have now want to have their any group departures. They want to have the final payment 120 days before departure. So 120 days before departure for on October 14 happens to be June 15. So you can pay your deposit today 500. Then you can wait right until June 15 to pay your balance money. Or you want to make it easy onto yourself. You paid 500 today, and you come end of March. You want to pay another three 400 dollars, and similarly May and June, um, um, April, May, and June, you can make it easy installment payments. Once you create your login, and some of you may have may have experienced this before, then it, it gives you a unique password uh, with your login, which I or your dedicated tour coordinator also doesn't get to know, um, you know, so you can always go back to the same area. And then first time you have just paid 500, the next time you come, you can, you know, whatever amount you're paying, Technologically, we are very advanced. 
So the system will immediately send you an invoice and a receipt for whatever money you have paid. And if you don't see that, then you can always call your two coordinator on a toll fee number or send an email and she will make sure. I have taken an actual uh, screenshot of how does it look. So this is how it looks. Um, you know, when you click on to the overviews, gives you the overview of the trip. Price and date gives you the price and date, which is 3649 from Fresno. When you click on book now over here, it'll take you and it's pretty easy. There is also a QR code, a QR uh, you know, code at the bottom of the page one of the brochure. If you scan this code, it will also take you to the same website. Um, I'll show you how does it look. Uh, so you can enter your personal details, name, date of birth. You can upload your passport copies. Um, and you need to pay $500 deposit in order to hold the space. Uh, final payment by June 15. And your dedicated tool co coordinator. Her, her name is Sabine Husman. Her toll free number is 866-978-2997, extension 822. And very simple, easy to remember email ID, which is Sabine at indus.travel. This is one of the payment page, which looks, you know, when you will go, when I showed you the first page, second page, and third page is where you arrive, where it asks you to either make the full payment over here, or you can just pay the deposit only. Also, we offer you that if you choose to do, um, you know, the full payment at one go uh, through bank transfer, then we give you a discount of one and a half. I saw it just something like $72 discount if you make the full payment. And if you use your Visa or MasterCard, then there is a 3% merchant fee. But if you make any debit payments or you know direct payments, then there is no merchant fee. So this is how you make your booking. If there is somebody who is not comfortable in making an online booking, and if you, though you know, we have not experienced this in last few years, but if there is somebody and you need help, A, you can ask the help from Chamber, or you can ask the help from Sabine, or we can then provide you a manual form, which I'll have to make. So you can let Greg or his team know, and he will ask me, and I'll make a manual form. You can fill it, and then it can be scanned and sent or you know, faxed to us. Some general information about the three countries that we're visiting. So Czechia, the climate, generally speaking, is temperate, cool summers, cold, cloudy, humid winters. Its currency is called Corona, or in its local way, it's called Coroni. The three-letter code for the currency is CZK, CZK. The voltage and the electrical plug is 230 volt in all the three countries, as you can see here. Same, 230, 230, 230. What we use in North America is 110. So that is it. But again, remember that we are living in a time and an era where all the gadgets that we use, that means your phones, your laptops, your you know book readers, any of that matter, even if you're using, for example, a shaver, they all are auto voltage. So you do not need a converter. What you need is a good adapter. And you should take an adapter which will work on type C, E, F. You know, so C and F here, E here, and C and F here. So you can see there are different types of plugs, slightly different, this to that. But if you buy an adapter, either from, you know, one of the local travel shops, from Walmart, from Amazon, whatever you, you know want, the cheap brand will come for anywhere between you know, 10, 12 bucks. But I recommend that you buy something which is like 18, 20, 25 dollars. A good one, which even comes with the direct slots on top of it, you know, for your phone charger. Uh, so you do not have to use a further adapter to put your phone. And you can straight away put your USB on that side and you can charge your phone. So buy something like this and you will be able to use it. Um, again, remaining with Czechia, its major languages are Czech and Slovak. Slovakia is, is the neighboring country, so they speak both Czech and, uh, and Slovak. Its major religion is Roman Catholic, 10.4%, uh, and Protestant, 1.1%. You may be wondering what happens to the rest. The rest of them do not identify themselves with any religion. Uh, so it's uh, this kind of country. The water is portable in all the three countries. So, you know, you can drink the water. There's absolutely no problem in drinking water in Czechia, in Austria, or in Hungary. Austria. The the climate is temperate, continental, cloudy, cold winters with frequent rains, and some snow in lowlands and snow in mountains for sure. Uh, moderate summers with occasional showers. Major language spoken in Austria is German, Turkish, Serbian, and Croatian. 
uh, major religion, Catholics, 57%, Eastern Orthodox, 8.5%, 7.9, almost 8% Muslims, and Evangelical uh, Christians, about 3.3%. Hungary, climate is temperate, cold, cloudy, humid winters, and warm summers. The currency is HUF, Hungarian foreigns. HUF, Hungarian foreigns. Languages spoken is Hungarian, English, German, Russian, Romanian, and French. Remember in my presentation, I told you it's a cultural hub. It being on the Danube River, it being, you know, a trade and hub center of the Central Europe. You can see how many languages this country speak. Hungarian, English, German, Russian, Romanian, and French. Major religions, Catholics, Calvinist, and Lutheran. Um, so that is about some general information on country. Uh, check uh, Corona is uh, uh, one US dollar gives you 23.27. This is today's rate I'll check. 23.27 uh, check Corona and one check will give you up 43 cents of United States dollar. No, 4.3 cents. Is it? Yes. No, 43 cents. Sorry, whatever it may be. It's late. I think your conversions off you use the same one for the Czech Corona and the Euro because uh, is yeah Euro that is that is an that is an error I was going to come to that so <laughs> Euro is almost equal to dollar okay there there's an error I just you know made that mistake over here but remember that one Euro is now 0.96 um, uh, one US dollar is 0.96 so you can convert Euro almost one to one and it has you know because US current currency is strong uh, these days which may fluctuate by the way. So euro, you can consider one to one, but in in Czechoslovakia, I mean in Czech Czechia, you have Corona, which is this rate, and Hungarian foreigns, you get for one US dollar three hundred and sixty one Hungarian foreigns. This is how the currency looks in Czechia. This is how the currency, and that's why you uh, you have a note over here which is ten thousand, one thousand five hundred because the currency is you know um, it's kind of high value against the United States dollar. So you can imagine that if $1 is 361, that means perhaps for one coffee, you're paying something like 900 uh, foreigns or a thousand foreigns, and which is this one note is gone in one thing. So this is about the currency. My apologies for the euros, but again, I'm repeating myself. Euro has been consistently for last three, four, five months, one is to almost one. So 0 0.96, 0 0.97, uh, you know, so it's hardly three cents different between our currency temperatures you would require some light uh, jacket and in the evenings in uh, in the city of Prague uh, you may require as a matter of fact you know um, a little bit heavier jacket also uh, because you you know people from California perhaps will require that kind of jackets uh, if I were talking about people from uh, Indiana and uh, Michigan and Chicago area uh, then a light jacket will perhaps do Let's talk about passport visas and insurance. So your passport must be valid in all three countries for six months when you travel. Remember six months. So you have plenty of time. If your passport is gonna expire, please get them uh, um, uh, renewed. Um, the renewal of passports has become very easy in the United States, unlike like six, eight months ago, it was taking a very long time, but it has been resolved now. And you also must have at least two blank pages on your passport. You do not require visas if for U.S. citizens to enter either of the three countries. And I don't know why I'm still mentioning, but because COVID is not completely eradicated, so, you know, the COVID situation is like anywhere else in the world. It's not completely gone, but it is more like a flu these days. And you do not require any vaccination proof of recovery, PCR test, all that is not required. Travel insurance is something very, very important. Travel insurance is highly recommended. What is travel insurance? Travel insurance is something that covers your delayed baggage, lost baggage, your sickness at the destination or whilst you're traveling. That means your visit to a doctor, your medication, or God forbid, a visit to the hospital. But what I recommend that you not only take a travel insurance, but also include something which is called trip interruption and trip cancellation. What does that mean? That means that a day before departure, somebody breaks his arms or leg, or somebody's you know, immediate family becomes ill, that you're unable to travel for any given reasons, which are covered by your insurance company, your 
premium minus the you might you know your investment minus the premium will be reimbursed back to you so you will not lose your investment into that that's why i recommend that you buy trip interruption but i have received an email today that we are going to reinstate with a new company some travel insurance uh, so you know travel insurance perhaps will become available within the next couple of days on our website but you do not necessarily have to buy it from us if you have an, an insurance company that you are comfortable with go ahead but i recommend that please do buy your travel insurance because your money that you pay to end this travel is non-refundable uh, so you better protect your thing if you are using a credit card then please check thoroughly with your credit card what is covered remember insurance is a company that will give you an umbrella when it is not raining but the moment it starts showering they will come and snatch that umbrella back from you so be careful be careful in what you're doing you know if you're you're depending on your credit card then speak to them and say what am i covered for is there any um you know minimum payment that you want me to pay and things of the sort uh again if we continue with the flies that i've told you 95 percent, you will have one piece of luggage which means you know check-in uh which is 52 pounds or 23 kilos uh, 50 pounds or 23 kilos um and one carry on hey, thank you very much for your presentation today you know we urge all of uh, everybody on the the the, uh, the zoom today to you know this is open to family and friends you do not have to be a clovis chamber member to go on the trip. so we encourage you to share this information uh with your family and friends this is a great opportunity to to travel with folks that you know at a very reasonable uh, value-oriented price with a great tour company um, and we will uh, have this link available uh, so if your family and friends want to uh, re-watch this presentation um, you will be able to go to the Clovis Chamber Travels website and we will post the link to this presentation there.